believers at home who are watching this program from wherever you are. We thank God that he has sustained you through the entire week last week. And today we still want to delve further into the book of Daniel chapter 8. And our topic is from contamination to purification. And before we go further, I want to introduce those that are going to speak to us on this important subject. And these are our brother uh, Robert. Kindly say hi to the viewer. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ and welcome. Thank you so much. We have brother Sir Charles. Blessed viewers back at home, happy day with good news. We are glad that you are watching. May you be with us as you hear what the Lord has for us today. Thank you so much, Brother Elder Opere. In the name of our Lord Jesus, I salute you all. In, I salute you all. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank Amen. You. Thank you so much. And I think before we even start, Brother Robert, kindly pray. We believe as we pray, our Father and Lord in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to study your word again. It is our prayer that your Holy Spirit will guide our minds and our tongues, that, oh Lord, whatever we are going to speak, let it be that which is inspired by thee. Now be with us as we start, oh Lord, until we finish. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We've invited the presence of God to enable us, and even you who's at home and at work and uh, watching us even on mobile phones, and even as we always encourage you, when you share this um, via YouTube, you get to get the message to as many people as possible. We now want to go to the book of Daniel chapter 8. Ch Daniel chapter 8 is a book that uh, actually parallels chapter 7. And uh, we want to read the first uh, text. Then, of course, uh, we will start putting it into context. Verse number 1 says, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, to me, Daniel, after the one that appeared to me the first time. Maybe, Robert, you had something on this text. Why is so much repetition? To me, to me, Daniel, this appeared to me. And maybe just a minute, then we go to Elder. Uh, the, the, you know, God is a good teacher. Uh -huh. He uses repetition mm -hmm. because then it, it depends our understanding. Mm. We are able to understand what he says if he repeats it. That's why uh, even in the visions, he starts with the dream in Nebuchadnezzar in chapter 2. Mm -hmm. The same story is repeated in a different way in chapter 7. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is repeated again in chapter 8. Thank you so much. Now, Elopere, yeah. God, is, uh, God is repeating this message to help us to be able to have a clear and a better understanding. And for the viewer back at home, the entire of chapter 8, as we start laying the foundation onto it, we are going to say how important it is to learn the history and what can we apply from that history and how relevant it is going to help us moving forward. Elder, start with the key text then. Uh, thank you so much from... The key text, that is Daniel chapter 8, verse 14, mm -hmm. which um, uh, I read from New King James Version, and uh, it says, And he said to me, For 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Mm -hmm. When we come to chapter 8, you say that um, you wonder why God repeats this. We call it recapitulation. Mm -hmm. It tell it over again to me. There is a song like that. Tell it over again to me, wonderful mm -hmm. words of love. Mm -hmm. Tell it over and over till it sings. Mm -hmm. That is what was told to Moses at the banks of Jordan because he could know that in Deuteronomy 6 6, these words. Mm -hmm. Tell them to your children when they wake up, when they are on the road. It was to be repeated over and over so that it sings. Now we come to Daniel chapter 8. Mm. It says, in the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me. To me, Daniel, after the one that appeared to me the first time. I saw in the vision and it so happened while I was looking that I was in Sushan, the citadel which is in the province of Elam. And I was in the vision that I was uh, by the river Ulai. Mm -hmm. You see, you realize now, Daniel had seen a vision in chapter 7, where we see it is repeated. Why do we call it repetition? What was in chapter 2, where the statue was? We saw, first of all, saw the world powers there. We came to chapter 7. Now, it shifted gear. It was now becoming more of spiritual. Mm -hmm. 
Now we come to chapter 8. It is even going deeper. In chapter 7, the key aspect was the, the, see, the court was seated mm. and the Ancient of Days took seat. We saw a court set that is in heaven as we saw it. Yeah. But now in chapter 8, as we are going to look at it, even the language changes. Actually, when you read, you find that chapter 7, the language Amharic. But now when you come to chapter 8, going forward, it comes back to Hebrews. Mm. So you find even the language now changes. And it shifts from, it takes as much, when you read it now, when you look at the introductory part, what Daniel now saw. And uh, he saw a ram and a goat. In chapter 8, as we begin, we realize that the attention now changes. Chapter 7 had left us. The, seat, uh, the, the, the court was seated, the heavenly court. But now, it, chapter 8 goes further. Of what is happening in the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It takes us what is happening the, what used to happen in the heavenly sanctuary, that in the, what used to happen at the, the, uh, in the Holy of Holies was only happening on the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. So when it is taking us to the heavenly sanctuary, that is the Holy of Holies, it is taking us to atonement, which, is make, which means it is bringing us closer and closer to the end of everything. Which we'll be able to see then uh, what it means by the cleansing of the sanctuary. Yes. But before we get there, I know that we have some introductory remarks also to make onto this as we build the foundation. Charles, what do you have for that? Uh, actually, when you read Daniel 8 verse 1, hmm. uh, Daniel himself is saying that he's having the vision in the reign of Belshazzar. Mm -hmm. So that tells us that the book of Daniel is arranged in, in a particular way. Mm -hmm. Uh, from the beginning chapters, you're just given the history. And then now as we come to chapter 7 and chapter 8, we go into the deep details of the visions that were actually there. Mm -hmm. So Daniel is in Shushan the palace <coughs> and in Medopasia to where he was. And uh, he is by the river Ulai, as he has said. And when he was by this river, he actually saw a ram. And uh, that ram had actually two horns. And actually one horn was higher than the other. Mm -hmm. And, the one, and uh, the one which was higher came last. So these two horns, and as you know, the ram is actually representing the Medo-Persian kingdom. So one horn was for the Medes, and the other horn was for the Persians. But don't assume that as we know. Oh, okay, we, we, we can be able to get there. So yeah, that we, we can read the verse by verse. Yes. <laughs> yes. So that we're able to, to, to explain yes. uh, to the viewer and to yes. the listener. Uh, when we say that yes. this, this ram, this yes. one comes first, yes. the horn comes first, it's longer, it's larger, it's yeah. stronger, what does that mean? Because when we contextualize that way, it will be able to bring out the actual meaning. So Okay, we, we can go to the exact verse. Actually, and read the book of Daniel chapter 8 verse 3. Yes. Uh, Daniel chapter 8 verse 3, in the King James Version, it says, Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before me the river Aram, which had two horns, mm. and the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came last. Then when you go to verse 20 in the same verse, in the same chapter, uh, Daniel 8 verse 20, King James Version, it says, The ram which thou sowest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. Now that's correct. Yes. So actually the ram is the Medo-Persian empire. So the two horns, one is for the Mede and the other one is for the Persians. So when you look at the history, uh, the reason why one horn is higher is because the Persians were actually more powerful than the Medes. Yeah? So they were more powerful in terms of military power, in terms of conquering. Mm. And actually the Persians came last. So the Medes started by ruling and conquering. But when the Persians came, they became more powerful and more stronger. And that is why actually the horn is actually higher than the other. And just to mention a little bit on that, if we can go back, when you remember when you are speaking about the Medo-Persian kingdom, in the previous, when you start with the Nebuchadnezzar image, the Medo-Persian empire was represented by, by the, the, the silver, silver. The, yeah, the mm. chest which, which had mm. the two arms. So one arm was actually for the Medes and the other arm was actually for, for the Persians. And in this case, if you are right-handed, you would assume that the Persians were represented by the right hand because it is actually stronger. Oh. And then we have, seen, uh, uh, we have seen when we come to the bear, the bear which actually represented the Medo-Persian Empire. 
So the bear was actually raised up on one side. So this was also to represent the fact that the Persians were actually more powerful than the Medes. And of course, the horns you have seen, one is higher than the other, and it came last, the Persians came last and became more powerful than the Medes. So in the book of Daniel, we are seeing the same illustration from the image of King Nebuchadnezzar to the four beasts to this ram and goat explaining one of the same thing, but giving details, details, little details here and there for more expansion. In fact, the Bible says a little here, a little there, yeah. and the truth is established. Thank you so much for that, Charles. Now, uh, verse number four. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward, and southward, so that no animal could withstand him, nor was there any that could deliver from his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. A number of things that we're going to learn here. Uh, this ram that has come is pushing westward, so we need to know which is this kingdom that is being pushed on the westward, northward, and southward. But before we get there, why are we using these animals, the ram and the goat? Uh, thank you. You know, we are used to God using beasts, uh, like in Daniel chapter 7, in Revelation chapter 13 and 17. God always uses beasts uh, to illustrate kingdoms uh, and horns. But when we are coming to Daniel chapter 8, as Eldo Perez said, the focus shifts from the lateral kingdoms to heaven, a scene in heaven. And actually we are, dealing, uh, uh, we are talking about the sanctuary mm -hmm. in heaven. And so God had to come up with a, a way to show us that our focus now is not on earthly kingdoms, but rather on the sanctuary that mm -hmm. is in heaven. Mm -hmm. And what animals were used in the sanctuary, if you read your Bible well in Leviticus, you'll find it is the ram and the goats. Mm -hmm. For the sacrifice, da daily sacrifice, uh, they used uh, the ram. Mm -hmm. But for the yearly sacrifice, they used the he goat. Yes. Actually, uh, that's actually, you can say, uh, uh, yes. the Numbers chapter 7 yes. and the Leviticus chapter 16. Yes. They'll be able to illustrate that for the viewer. Yeah. But there was a time that these two animals were used in the sacrifice together. Mm -hmm. And that time was the, uh, the, the time of uh, the day of atonement. Uh -huh. That is the only time that these animals were used together. And so for God to show us that the focus is now shifting to the sanctuary, uh, the sanctuary he uses these animals. Number two, another question that could be asked before we address the other one is, why then are we studying, uh, starting with Medo-Persia and not Babylon mm -hmm. as previously in chapter 7? The reason is uh, that, uh, you know, we are addressing the, the, the key text. Mm -hmm. Unto 2,300 days mm -hmm. and the sanctuary shall be cleansed. cleansed. And we shall see that the sanctuary, uh, the, 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 day, uh, the, the day that starts, the 2,300 uh, days, days, was given during the reign of Medopasha. But of course, that we'll see later. Mm -hmm. And so, for God then, his focus is at the kingdom of Medopasha going forward, mm -hmm. not Babylon. That's why we start with Babylon. Mm -hmm. That's and why that, we start with Medopasha. That's why we start with Medopasha, not, not Babylon. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Then lastly, mm -hmm. allow me to say, that as these kingdoms come, they actually improve in power. The, 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 the verse that you've just read in verse mm -hmm. 4, the last bit, but he did uh, according to his will and became great. Mm -hmm. Medopasha was great. Yeah. But if you come to the Higot, which is now Greece, yeah. you realize in verse 8, uh, it became very great. Yeah. Uh, verse 8, therefore the Higot waxed very great. Mm. Then the little horn that gets comes out of the Higot in verse 9. Mm -hmm. See what the Bible says. Uh, and out of one of them came forth a little horn which waxed exceedingly, exceedingly great. great. So in power it is, you know, there is great, great, very great yeah. and exceedingly and great. Exceedingly great yes. Which means that they are, they, they are improving in power. Mm. That's what I can say about... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see you uh, as yeah. we wind up. Uh, uh, I, I, I would like to say that uh, Daniel chapter 8, uh, when you re look at the vision Daniel is receiving at this point, mm. it is beginning with the media and Persia. Mm. It has left Babylonian kingdom. Mm. 
And one would wonder that why was Babylon remo uh, not there? My brother uh, here had brought aspect that um, when you look at how Daniel, the book of Daniel is, it may not be in a chronolo chronological order. Because you look at chapter 6, you wonder why chapter 6 has come at chapter 6. I deal it should have come after, after chapter, chapter eight. 8. Because Belshazzar's reign is ending, we are seeing it in chapter 6, chapter 5, chapter 6. While Daniel had received this vision of the fall of King Belshazzar and being succeeded by Media and Persia way before even the kingdom were, uh, collapsed. Mm. No wonder Daniel had a lot of confidence before he went, when he went to before King Belshazzar because mm. he knew after all his kingdom was passing. Mm -hmm. So one thing which is key uh, for a, all of us to understand is that the vision Daniel is getting in chapter 8 does not, be, it does not include mm -hmm. the kingdom of Babylon. Mm. It includes the kingdom of Media and Persia because the uh, Be uh, Babylonian kingdom is coming to its end. Mm. And that is very key as we go ahead because we are dealing with the 2,300 days which we are still looking at things which are happening which will eventually help us to understand when it began and when it would end. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I can see you have a mic. As you close on that, answer this. There's the pushing. Uh, uh, westward, northward, and southward. And also then the, the, the male god is also coming in also to push in the opposite direction. What is this pushing and what is this conquering about? Actually, the pushing just represents when you say north, east, and west, the four corners of the compass, or what the Bible says, the four winds of the earth, or the four corners of the earth. It means that the Medo Persian Empire really conquered all nations and became actually a world ruling power. It is until the good that is actually the Greece, yeah, being led by, the, by Alexander, the that actually comes up. And just to mention something about this goat, eh? uh, the goat has actually four horns, yeah. And when you look at the other illustration of the leopard, the leopard had four heads, yeah? So the four horns actually represent, when Alexander died at the age of 32 or 31, he had actually no one to inherit the, the kingdom as the heir. Mm -hmm. And so his four generals took up over the kingdom. And then something also to touch on the goat, we are being told that as the goat came from the west, eh, from the face of the whole earth, it actually did not touch the ground. It was actually so fast that in its moving, it did not actually touch the ground. When you actually look at the leopard, we are told that it actually had four wings. Yep. And we know that the four wings actually Most represented sickness. the speed. Mm. So uh, Greece in its rulership, yep. as it is represented by the four wings and the goat actually not touching the ground, it was actually so fast in conquering kingdoms and bringing them down. Mm. When Nebuchadnezzar took three years, Alexander only took three months. So it was actually very fast and it's actually used to move at a very high speed. Thank you so much. We come back to continue and we want to take a short break. When we come back, we go to uh, from verses number eight downwards so that we understand that out of them, out of these four horns comes one that is stronger. We want to understand what that is and how we can put it in the right context in our Christianity today. Believers, I'm sure you are still thinking about these things even as you go through your Bibles yourself. So number nine, verse number nine also tells us something that we need to understand. And out of one of them came a little horn which grew exceedingly great towards the south, towards the east, and towards the glorious land. Verse number 10, and it grew up to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the hosts and some of the stars to the ground and trembled them. He even exalted himself as high as the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifices were taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. Elder Peer, yes. this speaks to me like what we saw in uh, a number of texts in chapter 7. So help us to build a parallel so as to understand this little horn as now is now not being called a horn anymore, but uh, it, it's being described as he. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Him. Mm. Uh, thank you so much. I think as my brothers here have explained, it is very key. There is a lot of parallelism here. Mm. For the purposes of you and I and the listener 
to get it better. You realize that we said we first of all saw a ram which represented media and mm. Persia. Mm. And it has been succeeded by a goat, a he goat, which now represented the Greek. Mm. But then another uh, power which works exceedingly greater has now, over, uh, has now overtaken mm. the, 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 the goat. Verse 8, as you already said, uh, verse 9. And out of one of them came a little horn which grew exceedingly great towards the south, towards the east, and towards the glorious land. So, even from the previous ones, from chapter 7, chapter 2, which one is the kingdom which came after the Grecian Empire? It was the uh, pagan Rome. Mm. It is a pagan Rome which came into existence. And then we find here its growth. When we look at its growth, you realize that uh, uh, it came and it grew. It uh, coming. Uh, it says the Bible says that uh, uh, towards the south, towards the east, mm -hmm. and towards the glorious land. Yes. And then verse nine, verse ten says, and it grew up to the host of heaven, of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and some of the stars to the ground and trampled them. Now, we are looking here at the growth of this kingdom. It first of all had uh, uh, vertical uh, conquering, uh, uh, horizontal, horizontal yes. the latitudinal mm. growth. Yes. Then after achieving its latitudinal growth, then, now, which now mm. depicts the pagan room, mm. latitudinal, then now it changed and had a vertical mm. growth. Now it gives us another phase of the the Rome, the growth of Roman Empire. It now shifts from pagan Rome to purple Rome. Why would we say that? We continue, and now is where we look at the parallelism mm. which you are saying we saw in chapter seven. in chapter seven. And let me just note something. It says of the glorious land, um, those. Uh, three directions correspond to the three major areas that fell under the domination of the pagan Rome. But now, let's come to the parallelism with the Daniel chapter 7. When you come, when you compare, you realize that both horns are little in the beginning. Mm -hmm. All of them were little at the beginning. Yes. That one you find in Daniel chapter 7, verses 8, and also Daniel chapter 8, verse, verse 9. Mm -hmm. They started small. But they continue to grow. Number two, both became greater later on. They became greater later on. You realize that they continue to grow. That is in Daniel chapter 7 verse 20 and Daniel chapter 8 verse 9. Mm. Another commonality between the, th the two is that both are persecuting powers. Mm. They are persecuting the saints of the Most High. Uh, Daniel chapter 7 verse 21 and Daniel uh, and 25 and Daniel chapter 8, verse 10 and 24. They are persecuting. We are talking of Daniel chapter 8 that the, the starry hosts, uh, we will explain there that the hosts which are talked of here are not the heavenly bodies, the celestial bodies like the moon, the stars, and other celestial bodies, the asteroids, the meteorites, and all that. No. But the starry hosts here we are talking of are like the people of God. Yep. Like Daniel chapter 7 says, it persecuted. And we know, now when the, the movement goes vertical, it was the purple Rome which initiated a lot of persecution for the saints. You only remember of the Crusades. Mm -hmm. Now, number four, both are self-exalting and blasphemous. How are they exalting and blasphemous? We realized in chapter 7, it would even try to change the set times mm -hmm. and the laws of God. Yep. It was the purple Rome which even attempted to change the fourth commandment mm -hmm. from the seventh day Sabbath to the first day of the week, Sunday, in 321 when uh, Constantine brought that regulation. It will try to change even the set times. Blasphemous. They will even abrogate 
themselves duties like uh, 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 forgiving, forgiveness of sins, things like the selling of the penance, mm, mm. the teachings like the purgatory, the little horn. Another point which is very key, both target God's people, we have labored much on that, mm. but they target God's people, Daniel chapter 7, 25, and Daniel 8, 24. Both have uh, aspects of their activity that are delineated by prophetic time. All of them, when you will look at the prophecy, they are a particular period. They have all particular periods in which they exist. Yep. I would love to say again, and that uh, chapter uh, 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 number seven, that both extend until the time of the end. They extend to the time of the end. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25 and 26, and Daniel 8, verse 17 and 19. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, lastly, but not least, both face supernatural destruction. We know ultimately, ultimately, they would be destroyed. Because in Daniel chapter 2, a stone came which was uh, not uh, uh, moved by a human hand. It just mm -hmm. came by a supernatural power and struck the statue and brought it to, uh, 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 destroyed it. Yes. Daniel chapter 24, tw uh, four, chapter 7, also we know that the son of man will come because the, the uh, courts were set. Mm -hmm. And in this chapter 2, we know there is a power which will come. And that is the prince, the high prince, that is Jesus Christ himself. Thank you so much. Uh, Robert, on that, uh, in addition, the, what's the stark difference? These are similarities. What are the differences? The only difference between 7 and 8 is that in chapter 7, pagan Rome is represented by a beast. But in chapter 8, it is represented by the little horn. Mm -hmm. But it is worth noting, noting that in chapter 7, verse 20, mm -hmm. when the angel came to Daniel to explain to him, what the horns meant. He tells him that he tells him that the ten horns that you saw are the ten kingdoms. kingdoms. So it, 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 it is not so much different yeah. because it at the end of the day it represents a kingdom. Mm -hmm. So therefore, when pagan Rome grew horizontally and it conquered kingdoms, mm. it was not enough for it. It, it wanted to grow vertically. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says it grew to heaven. When, uh, when in verse 9 it says the pleasant land, it's not actually heaven, it is Palestine. Yes. That is what it means. Mm. But allow me to say that uh, the horns came out of the winds, the four winds, mm. and not out of the, what can I say, the hiccup, mm. the little horn. It came out of the, f the four winds. We can read that. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 9, And out of one of them, which is this them? The, 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 what could confuse people is between the four horns of the goat and the four, wi not I mean the four winds that of heaven. And therefore, to, in order to make sense of this all, that horn, can only come out of the four winds mm -hmm. because it cannot draw its power from uh, a broken Greece, Grecian empire. Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, two th uh, mean three things that stand out uh, in verse 10. It says that, uh, and it cast down some of the hosts of the stars to the ground. As Opele said rightly, those represent God's people, persecuting God's people. Then it says in verse 11, the prince of hosts, you, it, it, it indicates that the prince of hosts, he magnified mm -hmm. himself even to the prince of hosts. That prince of hosts, uh, not uh, there, represents Christ. In, in fact, in Daniel chapter 9, he is called uh, Michael, your prince. Mm. In mm. chapter 10, uh, also he comes as Michael to, again to Daniel. And that represents Jesus. This one takes away the daily. Of course, there is the word sacrifice. 
what does this daily mean? Two things. Number one, the activities that were going on in the sanctuary. Number one was the daily sacrifi sacrifices for the removal or the, for, 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 for sins to mm. be uh, transferred mm. from the sinner to the sanctuary. Mm. He removed that. And in, instead of it, this power, this papacy put in its place priests who now stand in that place in, instead of you going to repent your sins, you repent to them. Mm. Number two, it removes the intercessory uh, function of Christ mm. that he did in the sanctuary. Mm. Well, that he is even doing right now. And instead of it, what do they tell you? When you've sinned, you've killed, you can go to the priest and confess. But what does the Bible say? We have one intercessor. Mm. Even the man who? Jesus. Yes. So you cannot co confess your sins to, to any other, other man. man. Mm. Mm. Lastly, it says in verse 12 that and it cast the truth to the ground. Mm. You know what is the truth then that has been cast to the ground? The Bible says in the book of uh, John chapter uh, 14 verse 6, Jesus describing himself, he says, I'm the, the, the truth, I'm the way, the, the, truth, the, and way the truth and the life. life. So it means that Jesus is being cast. But also in chapter 17, verse 17 of John, thy word is the truth. Sanctify them by thy word. Thy mm. word is truth. truth. So two things have been cast down here. Mm. Number one, the word of God during the dark ages, you were not permitted to read the Bible. Yep. That is how it cast down the mm. truth. In fact, you, if you are caught reading the Bible, you will be persecuted. persecuted Number yes. two, it replace, uh, this power replaces Jesus, who is the truth, the way and the life, by the papacy, the system of the papacy. Mm -hmm. And now he's called the vicar of Christ. The vicar means that he replaces in place of mm -hmm. Christ. That is how much this power uh, does harm to the word of God. Thank you so much. I just want to add that in that part of the casting of the truth, that in place of that, then of course, there is the introduction of false doctrine, introduction of uh, tradition, mm -hmm. instead of the, the, the authority of, of the, the Bible. In, in fact, they say that uh, tradition has much, is much higher mm -hmm. than the word of God, yes. tradition that has been passed down to them. Yes, uh, just to add on to what my brother has just been saying, especially verse 10, where we are told that the little horn waxed great and cast some of the host of heaven and even the stars to the ground. Mm. So here we see the little horn in its primary sense representing the Roman Empire, but also in its secondary sense also representing the devil and what he did in heaven in casting out the, that of the stars of angels in heaven. Let me explain that. When you go to Revelation and we have the dragon, so primarily the dragon represents Lucifer, but secondarily it also presents the, the Roman Empire by, because of the ten horns and we know what happens. And again it is this dragon that goes to fight the church by the water coming out of the mouth. So we see that the devil was always using the pagan Roman Empire to actually fight the church and, and so on. But just some few things I'd like to highlight there is that the little horn magnified himself even above Christ. We know that even the death of Christ on the cross was actually, of course it was the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the elders of the church but the political power that was actually behind the death of Christ is actually the Romans that actually put him on the cross from Pilate to all the others. And actually by the little horn, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing here, is that the daily sacrifice was taken away. When Christ actually died on the cross, mm -hmm. that actually meant that there will be no need again for us to always go with the goats and with the rams as a daily sacrifice. And it also says actually in verse 11 uh, and uh, the place of his sanctuary would actually be cast down by the little horn. We know that in AD, 70 AD, the Romans came to Jerusalem and actually destroyed the sanctuary. So they crucified Christ, they ensured that there is no need of daily sacrifice and the sanctuary was actually cast down. It is the same people that we are actually speaking of as the Romans. And then when you read further, uh, that the host of heaven was given a uh, pardon, verse 12. Maybe I can read verse, uh, verse 11. Uh, Daniel chapter 8 verse 11 to 12 it says, here he magnified himself to the prince of hosts and by 
him, the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was actually cast down. Then verse 12 says, and a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by the reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and that he practiced and prospered it. Yeah. You know that uh, even when Stephen was being stoned, yeah, and when the early Christians were actually being martyred, we know that, of course, the chief priests had actually given Paul the authority, but the political power that was actually enforcing the, the early Christians to actually be killed mm. was actually by the Romans. And so we, we see this as a persecuting power all along the way as we actually go on. <clears throat> Thank you so much for that uh, elaborate explanation. I think I want to take a short break as we internalize these things. When we come back, we start from chapter 13, where then we go to the... Uh, I mean, uh, the sanctuary and the process of the cleansing of the sanctuary and how that is relevant to the Christian of today. See you in a few minutes. Believers, as we come to the last episode of this, we had started with an introduction that we are moving from contamination to purification. And I'm sure you've been wondering, what is, it, what is this? And all the discussion that we've done. And now we want to get into that discussion uh, from verses number 13 of the book of Daniel, chapter 8. The Bible says, Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain one who was speaking, there are two holy people here speaking one to each other. Mm. How long will the vision be concerning the daily sacrifices and the transgression of desolation, the giving of both the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot? Mm. And he said to me, for 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Mm. Now, this sanctuary, we are talking about the earthly sanctuary, was actually built at the time of, uh, in the time of the Persian Empire. We're talking about the ram here. And of course, it was attacked. We're talking about the, ra the, 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 the goat, the aspect of attacks coming in. And we've also said there is the horizontal takeover, but also now the, the vertical attack, which has come even to the essence of the systems being attacked, the sacrifices being attacked, the position of Christ being attacked, the word itself being trampled upon. And the question is, for how long? Mm -hmm. But before we get to how long, uh, where else in the Bible do we find the cleansing of the sanctuary? Maybe you take us to, to Leviticus or there. Yeah. Mm. Uh, thank you so much. Eh? Uh, when we talk of the sanctuary, mm -hmm. we find the type and the anti-type. Exactly. This is a type. And that was given to Moses. Mm -hmm. When God said, build for me a sanctuary that, that I may I live amongst you. Yes. And so that sanctuary which Moses built was in the pattern or and in, in the order of the heavenly sanctuary. Right. And the activities which were taking place there symbolized what would take place in the heavenly sanctuary. And now when we talk, we come from, com, uh, from uh, uh, we, uh, 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 contamination to purification, mm. we, it now falls squarely with what was happening in the earthly sanctuary, which now takes us to the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. We know that in the earthly sanctuary in Leviticus 26, there was one, there was the daily sacrifices mm -hmm. which were being done. But at the end of it, there was a special day called the Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. What used to happen on that day? On that day, yes. it is when the high priest, you see, when you Every day when somebody goes to the sanctuary and the sacrifice is offered, it was known the sin is transferred mm -hmm. from to the sanctuary, mm -hmm. from the person to the sanctuary. But then they would need one day when the sanctuary itself would be cleansed. Then the high priest would get into the holy of holies and do the work of cleansing. Mm -hmm. And that is where now the goat would come because there would be two goats, one which would be sacrificed and another one to whom, to, I would say to whom or to which, the, all the sins would be placed, mm. the Azazel goat. Mm -hmm. Because, and now here, Azazel would be somebody now who take, because the author 
the author of sin is Satan, mm. who will eventually have to bear. But now, coming to where we are, so on your question, that is in the Bible we get very well the issue of the sanctuary ministry mm. there. Mm. Of course, we know the book of Hebrews now gives us of what is happening in the heavenly sanctuary, mm. or what Jesus is doing. Mm. But now we come to this chapter 8, verse 14. After the devastating attack of the horn, the announcement is made that the sanctuary will be cleansed. But in order to understand this message, it is important to know the relation. Look at the, when you look at Daniel 8, 14, and then you look at Daniel, the judgment scene of Daniel chapter 7, verse 9 to 14, and the judgment is taking place in heaven. It therefore means the sanctuary must be located in heaven too. Hmm. So we are talking of the sanctuary which is located where? In heaven. Uh, and now, the earthly sanctuary was modeled in the order of that heavenly sanctuary. Now, this vision, it covers the entire period of this when the, from the time of the Media and Persia. When we are talking of this period which is being seen, mm -hmm. we are talking of the entire period of that, that entire period. But it is taking us, what is happening now is going to take us to the heavenly sanctuary. And as, the, um, as the, it, it happened, on the atonement happened on the earthly sanctuary, this one is now taking place in the heavenly mm -hmm. sanctuary. The, when you read the book of Hebrews chapter nine, 7, mm -hmm. you read verse 25, he says, Christ is in the holy of holies where he lives mm -hmm. to intercede. And now he is, yes. Aaron was the type of the high priest. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus is now the antitype. Thank you so but much. Now gives us the cleansing, mm -hmm. where now the cleansing of the sanctuary of the heavenly sanctuary mm -hmm. would be uh, is taking place. I know you have something. As yes. we do this, we also would do well to, to, to elaborate. What is this 2,300, even if it's in a bullet, so that we are talking about days. Mm -hmm. You see, when you put the 2,000, if you go literally days, these are barely six years, because a year mm -hmm. is 360 mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. But then we would want, I know we'll talk about it in the next study, but for the purpose of today, to change this, because this is not days. We are talking about Yes. Go on. <coughs> yes, a day in prophecy represents a year. So when you speak of 2,300 2, days, you are actually speaking of 2,300 years. And they actually began at 457 BC, both the, the 70 weeks and these 200 and um, 200 and 300 days. 2,300. 200,000 days, which end up in 1844. So they begin at 457 BC and end up in 1844. So it says that unto these days the sanctuary shall be cleansed. So like Opere was actually saying, if I can just simplify in, uh, in just simple words, eh, the high priest in the other sanctuary used to enter into the most place once, mm -hmm. and he actually used to enter with the, board, with the blood of goats and rams and the, the, the sacrificial animals. And it is by this that the sins of the people are transferred from the most holy place into the most holy place in the other sanctuary. But now how are our sins transferred into the sanctuary which is in heaven by the same. It is by the blood of Christ that this, our sins are actually transferred mm -hmm. into the most holy place in heaven using his blood. So it is in 1844 now when Christ, when these two 2300 years were over that Christ actually entered into the most into the most holy place with actually his own blood like the high priest on earth would enter with the blood of goats and rams. So he actually entered with his own blood to actually now cleanse the real sanctuary. Because this one was a figure, this one was a diagram, mm -hmm. it was just the type of the real sanctuary. So it is actually at that time that the cleansing is actually happening and mm. that it is actually occurring at that time. As, as, as you say that, maybe yes. in, simply put, what yes. is this cleansing and what does it mean? Uh, so cleansing now is when your sins are completely removed. Mm -hmm. For example, we say, let me use my example as, a, yeah. as an example. Maybe Charles has been a thief, Charles has been working on the Sabbath. So those sins are actually in heaven. So when your name is actually brought to the table, when the judgment is actually happening, as mm -hmm. we were in Daniel chapter 7, yes. so Christ stands up and says, I know Charles he was a sinner. 
he used to do this, he used to do this, he used to do this, but I have actually died for him on yes. the cross. By my blood and my character, let it be transferred to him, and it is actually cleansed. In layman's language, cleansing is actually making clean, yeah? Mm. Something that is dirty and actually making it clean. So, that is what is happening. Mm -hmm. So, at the end of that process, you either confirm with the book of life, yes. or you actually confirm with the book of death. So that is the investigative judgment so and the that cleansing. tells us there are books of records, yes. books of life, and all those. Books I'm sure you have something on that. Yes. Yeah, just to add to what Charles has said, mm. you know, how was the earthly sanctuary cleansed? Actually, during the daily sacrifice, mm. when you bring your ram to sac you are the one to, s yeah, to kill it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, not the priest, yes. so that you know that your sin has cost a life, mm -hmm. and that was a type of Christ. Yes. Behold, the Lamb mm -hmm. of God that takes away the, the sins, sins of the world. Mm -hmm. Now, when that ram has, be, has died, the priest could come and take some blood to the holy place for record. Mm -hmm. To know that, yes, you are a sinner, but for the record, your sins are in the holy place. They have been transferred from you, yes, but God bears them in the holy place. So that now, once I hear... Mm -hmm. All those sins, all that blood, you can imagine the whole of Israel. All that blood which is in the holy place yes. now, you have to bring two goats. So that one is sacrificed to God, and the other one, the priest, takes all those sinners, sins that are in the holy place. Yes. And confesses them to that ram that is called Hazazel. And then after now the goat has bared those sins, it is sent where? To the forest, yes. wherever. Mm -hmm. Just go and die. Because now it is bearing that, that, th th those sins. Right. Now, in the heavenly sanctuary, just the, the way they have said, our sins, uh, every day before 1844, the, every day there was repentance of sins. The sins were transferred to the holy place. But then in heaven, after 1844, now Christ bears all those sins. Mm -hmm. Because he is the high priest. And he is in the most holy place. He bears them. Meaning that he has cleansed now the sanctuary. There is no record of sin. So long as you ask for forgiveness, there is no record kept in the sanctuary you. that your sins are in the sanctuary. That so, is the cleansing. So as, as, as you say on that, and I see Charles coming in. Mm. Uh, first John 1 John 1.9 says, When we confess our sins, they are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Micah adds 7.19, God doesn't take them into account anymore yeah. but then now with all this that we're talking about a time is coming and that's why i think we have judgment so that in as much as we've been forgiven mm. those records are still there so that at the end of it all at the time of christ coming this is what is now used to, as you said to fully declare mm -hmm. that now you are a saint and uh, and there's this side and the other side and so, uh, for, for the earthly sanctuary, I've got something here on Leviticus 16, verse 30. says that, uh, for on that day, mm. the priest shall make atonement for you to cleanse you, mm. that you may be clean from all your sins, even before the Lord. Yes. So, in the Christian of today, uh, uh, as you're coming yes. in, uh, we help us so even further understanding of this cleansing as well. Thank you so much. You've done justice to that. Anything to add? Uh, just to add, eh, because Christ went into heaven, I think it was in the year AD 31, after his death, 40 days, so it was around that year. So somebody may ask, eh, how is Christ? So when Christ went into heaven, when you read the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 12 and 13, when actually John is seeing him, he is actually seeing Christ standing or walking among the seven mm -hmm. golden candlesticks. Mm -hmm. And these seven golden candlesticks, when you look at the arrangement of the sanctuary, they are actually situated in the holy place. Mm -hmm. yeah? And so that was an indicator to us that when Christ ascended to heaven, the place of the sanctuary that he actually entered is actually mm -hmm. the holy place. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know the, the seven golden candlesticks were represented by the seven, which are the seven spirits of God and so on. But later now in 1844, and that is why we are reading the book of Daniel chapter 7, where we are being told that I saw the judgment was set and the ancient of days came. And then it actually says in a particular place that, and then I saw the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven and being brought closer to the ancient of days. Mm -hmm. So this is just an indication to show us that even in heaven itself, we don't know the size, it must be very big, but Christ is actually coming with the clouds of heaven in heaven itself to the 
Asiat of Days, that is moving from the most uh, from the holy place into actually the most, most holy, holy place, place where the judgment is actually happening, and that is actually the year 1844. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one thing I find here which is very key is that when we are talking of um, being cleansed, it, uh, uh, as it, had been said, it means to restore. Mm -hmm. It has to be restored. That is, the sanctuary must be cleansed from the sins of God's people. Yes. And that is, Christ is in the Holy, Holy of Holies. He's confessing our sins. These sins must be cleansed. God's intercessory ministry in the heavenly sanctuary must be restored. We know that again, God must be vindicated mm. at the end of it all. The purple system introduced distortions to the plan of salvation and usurped, usurped Christ's intercessory work by means of sacrament of the mass, the penance, and the absolution of sins by human priests. Mm, mm, but mm. then we know that this, the sanctuary message itself, now gives us that. It, hope that we are not only forgiven but it also points to the total and ultimate eradication of mm. sin yes when the sanctuary work is finished christ has finished as the high priest now he will come why uh, do that is why we say we are living at a critical time why because christ is in the holy of holies mm -hmm. in the atonement period during the atonement period the rest of the people what were they to do? They were to confess their sins because they did not know how long the high priest would be there. So you and me do not know how long Christ can, mm -hmm. we, can st we, we will wait for Christ to come. And now when it comes, it comes when it is the ultimate, the sin has to be eliminated. The righteous mm -hmm. have to be redeemed. Thank you so much. You have to come to the end. What's your conclusion? And my conclusion is that in Daniel chapter 8, as opposed to other chapters, the climax, we, 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 we don't see Christ winning mm. in Daniel chapter 8. And so I ask the, the viewer to be patient with us until Daniel chapter 12, because then we will show that at the end of the day, Michael must stand up. Mm -hmm. Actually, you might wonder in Daniel chapter 8, uh, if you read verse uh, 24, 25, the, 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 this, uh, this little horn destroys wonderfully. Mm. <laughs> it destroys mm -hmm. the sanctuary system. And therefore Daniel is, 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 is disturbed. Is disturbed. In fact, the, 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 chap the, the chapter ends in verse 27, mm -hmm. that, and I, Daniel, fainted and was sick mm -hmm. because he could not understand how this power could be given 2,300 years, as Charles has say, as mm. Charles has said, and Daniel, to his own understanding, it was only 70 years. Mm. So there is a confusion, mm -hmm. and so I w I invite you because in the next lesson we are going to deconstruct this 70 years and 2,300 years so that it fits perfectly with God's timing. I think he'll be uh, the viewer will be able to enjoy it. Thank you so much. Are you still burning, uh, Charles, to add on to that? So, as an encouragement to all of us, we are uh, actually told that we are living in that time because we are past the 1844. We are actually living at that time when the investigative judgment is actually going on. And as names of people are being brought forward, we are told that they began from Adam. We don't know whether the list is actually now to the people who are living. But any sins that we have done, those that we can remember, those that we cannot remember, we are encouraged that we should confess all of them. Otherwise, when your name will be on the table, and we are f it is found out that, uh, remember all the angels are watching, the interest is very high, and it is found that there are some sins that you never confessed and you never put them before Christ, that they may be cleansed to this blood, that will automatically disqualify you from actually being confirmed in the book of life. So it is actually very important, let us confess all our sins, the hidden si sins that we do and that we have always done, let us confess them before Christ, so that when our name shall be on the table, there shall be no sins that will be unconfessed and unforgiven by his own blood to be cleansed. Thank you so much. We couldn't go further than that. We want to encourage you, by the grace of God, go study further from verses number 15 all the way to verses number 27 of chapter 8. And when we come back next week, we are going to talk about Daniel's prayer for the people. Then we can understand further the issues of the days 
and numbering of days, and then that we can see how to contextualize that to make sense unto us. May God bless you even as you give us a closing prayer. Gracious Father and Holy God in heaven, we thank you for your word. Your word is sure and amen. And we thank you because, Lord, you say that you never leave your people in darkness, for you give them the light. We thank you for what we've said. Lord, we pray that you may magnify it for the viewer, so that each and every one of us understands what you want us to understand in such a time like this. May you bless us all, Lord, and may you make us your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, viewer. Continue studying together with us. If you have any questions, uh, check on our fa Facebook pages, write it on to us. And if you want to check the archived shows on a moment at Jesus' feet, uh, log into YouTube, search for it, you'll find it. It's always ready there. So, uh, watch these videos and share with your friends. And I'm sure we'll be uh, enriched together even as we wait for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. See you next time.